Well, thank you, the Buddy McCurd band, for uh, for being on uh, Valley Advocate Sessions. It was a pleasure thank to have you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Um, could you, uh, I know you, you just uh, introduced yourselves, could you uh, introduce yourselves once yeah, again? Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, uh, I'm Buddy McKern, this is... <coughs> Joe Carvalho. Sit yourself. Jeff Durkheim. Tom Sawyer. Yeah. Seriously, Tom Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Hawk Finn were, you know, yeah, besties no, back in the day, you know? It's fun being here with you, Chris, too. Team. We shared the stage with you a number of times over the years, and it's been, uh, it's great to reconnect. Oh, but, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, how did you guys uh, form as a band? I uh, I was doing a, I was playing at uh, Opa Opa up in Southampton. Um, it was like my first gig, and then I played with him at like open mics, but uh, it was my very first gig there. And he contacted me. He said, "Hey, I'll stop by and we'll and he'll just play." What were you playing? I was playing some percussion. Yeah, just some percussion and. Um, so it developed from there, so I went over his house a few times and we developed something and then I was also doing, Joe would come by and play a little bit and then Joe got Tom and, and it's been almost two and a half years, two and a half years almost three. three years going, but yeah. So you're the, uh, pretty much the sole songwriter and, and then you guys collaborate as a group. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. Well, what, what's the dynamic like uh, when you guys are kind of arranging songs, trying to figure out how um, to work it out as a band? Yeah, I just, I come up with like the bass kind of groove, I guess you'd say, and, and phrasing as far as like songs. But, um, but then, then we'll rehearse and, and, and these guys will be like, hey, you know, what about this? What about that? And there's been a lot of, um, a lot of songs that were developed just as like, hey, we should do this, we should do that. Like we do, like live, we'll do a, um, a Jackson Five tune, uh, to shake your body onto the ground, and it was just kind of like Jeff was like, you know, we should do a Jackson, you should do a, like a Michael Jackson song, and so. <laughs> Still so then I, so I, so then late at night I just sit up and play and I was like, hey, why don't we do this one? And, and it turns we always out. Do I needed an excuse though. to dance. Yeah, yeah. So occasionally I'll jump out. And yeah, dance he does dance. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. he's crazy feet, man. He totally deserts the drums and dances. Yeah. So, so um, did you guys ever do that Mac Michael Jackson cover? <coughs> oh yeah, yeah, we oh, do. Cool. Yeah, yeah, we do it yeah, all yeah. the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 We, we, but we do it differently. We try to attack every song our own way, yeah. and. Uh, but, but the other thing is that, that when we do it, uh, it depends on the venue. Like here, we kind of backed off a little bit. If we are in a bigger venue, we're at the Pines, we would crank it up. You know, if we were at the Iron Horse, we'd crank it up. If we're doing a duet, duo, we'll, we'll change the music a little bit. So uh, it's just having worked together for three years, I think, you know, we all kind of, kind of feed off each other, understand mm -hmm. where we're coming from. Yeah, most definitely. So uh, I guess this is a question for all the members of the band. Uh, what are some of your big, biggest influences, and where where do those kind of come into the play in this band? Um, yeah, you can go. That's kind of funny because um, we have very disparate differences. Yeah. I think I come. I'm old school. I I'm a, like a Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Jimi Hendrix kind of drummer, and that's where I started out. And um, like we're about as far from that as uh, you can get, you know, but uh, it's just it's just all about the music. We all click. So that's where I come from. Tom. Hey, I uh, was listening to rock and roll and buying my first albums during the golden age of rock and roll, late 60s. Come on, you're dating yourself, 70s. man. I, I may well be, but... People uh, thought you were like 30-something, all right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But Black Sabbath, The Stones, Doors, all of those... Uh, tremendous fans and Beatles from, from, from back then and uh, just uh, started influencing me as a garage band player and have stuck with me ever since and uh, what we do now sort of a lot of blues and blues rock has always been a big influence for me too. And uh, for about 10 years I ran a Watershop Studios and recorded a lot of local um, art artists from Seth Newton, you know, Kate Mitchell, Tom Sawyer, uh, and really exposed myself to a lot of different influences, a lot of new music. Um, but just before that, I was playing Celtic music with Jeff Snow, <laughs> which is, he was a famous uh, recording artist of Celtic music. So it's just a matter of, you know, every, every instrument has its charm, and each, each type of music has a place somewhere in our sort of range of music. And so uh, we don't, shut our eyes to any type of style or artist. As you say, we went go from 
the classic blues artist to Michael Jackson to the Beatles to Linda Ronstadt, and we'll we'll mess up their songs wicked. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll have some fun with it. But it's uh, it's all we, we we call it buddyizing the thing. You know, yeah. we we really rely on Buddy to to bring his sensibilities to it to make it unique, and that's what makes us a different band. Yeah. Um, influences for me. Say guitar wise. There's tenderizing and there's buddy eyes. Yeah. There's uh, a. <laughs> running through the buddy eyes. Guitar, there's probably John Lee Hooker and um, and and Ani DeFranco, actually. Um, I find her stuff to be great on guitar. And like vocally, I say Leave on Helm in the band and, I don't know, uh, actually Gillian Welch. Um, but yeah, but uh, then again, I. It's whatever, whatever works too. So. You guys uh, mentioned uh, that you're going to be starting on a new record. Uh, yep. Could you tell us a little uh, about that? Uh, well, we'll start. We got a we got a whole bunch of songs that, like you heard one, and actually the the last cover we might do that one. But we have a whole bunch, and we'll we'll get started in September. Summer's busy, um, with gigs and everything. So we'll get started with that, and then hopefully late fall, come out with a come out with a album and watch out for the CD release party. Yeah, right? yeah. And you still have, uh, we still have copies of the first CD that's yeah, so yeah. been selling pretty well. Yeah. So, you know. uh, are there any uh, specific uh, plans to record at one studio versus another? Or? Uh, no, I, I, we track, I usually track at my, my, I got a home studio, home project studio. So we track there, um, then send it to the guys and say, what do you think? And then it all gets put in a blender and then it comes back out and we'll record it and um, then we send it off to get mastered and mixed and but yeah so that's that's, what, that's the one the thing we do Chris is that when you hear on the, the CD which when we play live we sound like that CD we don't fool you know it's not like one kind of band some bands are just one thing in the studio one thing live we try to create it and we, we kind of push it a little bit extra live but it's pretty much what you hear in the CD is what you're going to hear when you see us live. Yep. Awesome. Well, I uh, can't wait to listen to it. And, right. uh, Thank thanks you for, for uh, being a part of Valley Advocate Sessions. Today. Thank you for thanks having us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Oh, stop it. <laughs>